Greetings, everyone. Welcome. Uh, for those of you who caught my appearance on Limited Resources talking about human drafting with Marshall, I wanted to give you a little follow-up on how to actually use the spreadsheet that I talk about on that show. And also, uh, if you did see that show, I want to mention right away, there was a pretty major error on my best of three calculations. I was... Um, uh, I didn't do one conversion correctly on the pack value so that if you entered pack values, it would wildly skew your uh, the, the value of the event. I fixed that, uh, but what it does is it, the, what I said on the show was that uh, it looks like new best of three is clearly worse of a value than old best of three. And the real answer is they're about the same, better or worse, depending on what you value. And we'll get into that. But the, the main point is that the value proposition of best of three didn't change a ton um, depending on what you value. So that was my, my big error on that episode. And I wanted to acknowledge that and say to check that out uh, as soon as you, you know, acknowledge that. But I also am getting a lot of pushback, a lot of questions. Uh, basically, over the weekend, I got enough questions from people that I almost wanted to, you know, do like a, a, a little fact episode, uh, uh, how to use the spreadsheet, because some people are not quite sure what some of the col what, what some of the stuff means and what they're supposed to do with it. So I'm going to help you with that now. And um, starting with the link to the spreadsheet itself that I'll throw here. And also, of course, in the YouTube video will be uh, at the top level of the notes, but I'm sharing this for chat as well. And now we're gonna switch over to this spreadsheet. So I made this spreadsheet. Why? Let, let's, uh, let's, you know, it starts over here. Let me start over here and show you like, um, this is my little link to the tweet that announces the correction. But you can see here we have sealed, uh, and there's a table for sealed. There's a table for quick draft table for new premier draft, old traditional draft, and new traditional draft. So these are the, uh, you don't need to worry too much about what's going on here. Um, this this stuff is all automated, but if you're someone who likes to check the math, uh, this, is, this is where you would see, my, this is me showing my work effectively. But what we're trying to do with this spreadsheet is show, uh, with these tables over here, we're looking at first, what are all the possible win-loss uh, combinations that you could have an event? What are the chances that you are going to get that particular win-loss combination in the event given your win rate? And it does adjust for that. So it looks over here. The default, of course, is that everybody's 50-50 because we want to see what the average case is. So over here, these values are set to 0.5, which is like 50% win rate. And you can note, like, if we change that, though, like if we go, uh, if we say that we're 0.75%, we're you can see that over here, uh, the chance of these things have this it was 12 and a half percent chance to go 03 at 50 50. If you're a 75 percent player, you're 1.56 to go 03, right? So you can see that uh, your win win rate changes things dramatically over there, uh, by design. And so, gems is the prize that the event provides for that win rate, uh, boosters is the number of boosters in prizes you get for that win rate. Gem EV is basically the prize uh, the prize times the, the chance of it happening. And that shows you, and basically so you say, 12.5% of the time I'm gonna win this. 8.2% of the time I'm gonna win this and this. 5.47% of the time I'm gonna win this and this, right? And so basically you say all these percent times add up to the total, my total results. And on average, I'm going to get this many gems back from the event. So that's what we're trying to do here. But because, so one of the questions I get a lot is, what is this about? What is what is games and game EV about? This is because, again, I can't tell you what you value out of your experience. Some people find the act of drafting to be the most important thing. Like that, what I'm counting is the number of drafts that I get. I don't even care too much how many games I play. If I play a handful of games, I'm happy, but what I wanna do is draft, get the cards and move on. Like if that's your priority, you're event driven. Like you wanna know what the value and the cost is per event. But if you're like, look, I got money for entertainment and I wanna spend my money on magic games. So maybe your whole thing is, no, I wanna play as much, I wanna get as much gameplay for my money as I want, in which case you care about cost per game. So to understand cost per game in the system, we have to understand how many games a given win-loss 
uh, situation produces. So we go 0-3, you're going to win, you're going to play three games in that. You go 6-3, and three, you're going to play nine games in that. You go 7-0, and 0, you're going to play seven games in that, right? And so then again, if you take the number of games you're going to get based on this result, the chance of that result happening, and you multiply those two, the chance of the result happening times the number of games the result takes to get the, uh, the, the EV of games for that result, and then you add up all your total possibilities and you get that on average with a 50% win rate, you're going to play 5.73 games in um, in sealed. That's what this event is, right? Here's kind of, this is what, part of the whole point of this spreadsheet is to play with numbers and see what it does, right? So like, here's something that I think is interesting. Um, what, let's go back to that, uh, put a best of one win rate at 75% again. I'm winning 75% of my games. Um my game EV goes up to 7.6. Uh, you know, so skill produces value on the cost per game front because you win more and can play longer, you know? So win rate affects not only, you know, your prized results, but your game EV because it affects so, so strongly how many games you're playing. So you can see that that repeats the base, same basic structure. Oh, by the way, so like... Um, uh, if we look at like one of these, in fact, I need to update that this is, no, this is good. So, um, so the gem EV formula is looking at a bunch of stuff, but basically it's looking at, uh, gems, right? How, how much gems, but it's also looking at how much you value a booster. And right now I have it at zero because I can't define this for you. We'll talk about that too. I'm going to get into each of these and how to decide what to put in there. Uh, but basically, uh, this is looking at the, it takes the, the straight value of the gems, whatever flexible value you, you apply to the boosters. And then down here, this plus M8, the, you know, this, this tack on here, what is that about? What is, if you look at what that is, that is um, basically the value you put on um, sealed cards and drafted cards. So what, what are these worth to you? Again, we're gonna get into that in a minute, but I just wanted to show you these tables, and now we're gonna get to the heart of the matter, which is what you do with this spreadsheet. First thing you need to do is copy the spreadsheet because you can't uh, edit mine. So uh, <clears throat> what you wanna do is copy the spreadsheet and then you can make changes to these custom values, which is the fundamental thing we're trying to do here. But before we even do, before we even go down the rabbit hole of how to, what to put in these numbers and how to decide that, what is the point of this spreadsheet? The point of this spreadsheet is to play around with some numbers and see how win rate and uh, valuation of various assets in the system just affects things. It, it, it's something to play with, right? To kind of see roughly numbers. But more practically, it is first and foremost, and like, why do I do it? I want to see what Wizards is up to. So the first thing I want to do is see, are there any cues that are strongly out of whack with the value proposition in the system? Is there some cue that no matter how we run these numbers is just clearly a worse value than the other ones? And then I could say to the community, hey, we, did, we ran some numbers and you never wanna play blah because like it's just always better to do this other thing. Like that might happen. Now that's not generally what Wizards does and most uh, free to play games are not doing that. Like if you're a game designer and an economy designer, what you want to do is not create any uh, create as little regret as you can for people like choosing the wrong thing. So you actually try to make things have a similar amount of value to the 50-50 player so that there's not a huge punishment for kind of choosing wrong. But we're trying to make sure that there aren't any. So uh, and and we're going to basically keep wizards honest, right? We want to look at the value proposition of their events and and see if they're similar. Uh, another thing on a, on a personal front though, what you wanna do is you're using this to say, hey, given my win rates, are there is there a huge difference in value uh, between the queues such that I should be making a choice, I should only be playing in this, this one queue because the other queues are so bad for me. Fundamentally, that's kind of it. Like it's to play around with, it's to uh, make sure that Wizards isn't doing anything extreme in terms of their value offerings. And then to make sure that there's no clear, clear, clear cases for you on where you should be playing. And also you can kind of see, it's fun to see kind of how much you value the results of an event. Um, so this this column I just added here because I think it'll help because of some confusion of the kind of the purpose of this spreadsheet. Um, well, it depends on how you uh, how you how you value things. So don't don't make don't jump to any conclusions or like. Uh, 
until I explain what to do with these, okay? So I've got five custom value fields. Really one is just for sealed. Uh, fundamentally, there's there's three things you need to define. Your win rate, your value, the, how much you value a prize booster, and how much you value the cards you're gonna take away from the event. Those are the three things that you need to define here. But let's start, about, why do I have two different win rates? There's a best of one match win rate and a best of three match win rate. At 50-50, these are identical. If you're a truly a 50-50 magic player, you're gonna be 50-50 in best of one and 50-50 in best of three. But if you're anything else, which is basically all of us, you know, somebody out there may be exactly 50-50, but most of us are somewhere off of it. The farther your record gets away from 50-50, the more extreme the impact of your best of one match win percentage has on your best of three match win percentage. So for example, um, if I'm 75% to win a, uh, a single game, I am not 75% to win a match because I get to exercise my advantage over you uh, it, to try and win twice. You have to, you have to overcome your, my huge advantage twice out of three times. That is much harder to do statistically than just pulling it off once. Oh, I got lucky 25% of the time. Well, in best of three, you getting lucky against me in the first game 25% of the time isn't enough. Now you have to get lucky again and sometime in the next two games again for 25% in order to take the match. And so as you get away from 50-50, uh, it, it impacts your match win percentage. If your best of one match percentage is going up, your best of three match win percentage goes up faster. If your match win percentage is under 50, your best of three go gets worse faster, right? So there is there are formulas you can use to just calculate this automatically. I did not include them. Why not? I debated. I, I, somebody, people have given me the formula. It's not that I don't know the formula. It's that I'm uncomfortable with automatically processing a comparison between apples and oranges. The problem with um, best of one match win percentage and best of three match win percentage on arena is that best of one is all ranked and best of three is all unranked. And with rank pushing you towards 50% and best of three not, I think it really loses accuracy. Like I'm not sure Maybe it's better than nothing to still do the conversion, but I think it sends the wrong message. It sends the message that, don't worry, I've got you covered, the conversion is correct, when actually the conversions um, is, is gonna be off. And here's the other thing. If you don't know that, like, the problem with, the these two fields is they're so essential to understanding the value proposition for you and understanding which queue is going to be best for you but it's also something that if you're just guessing at you may as well just look at trends like if you don't know these numbers if you if you if you are not using a third party system like untapped.gg go check that out if you haven't here i'm going to throw that in chat uh untapped Dot gg if any of my mods or longtime uh, viewers want to share other third-party resources for digging into your arena data to come up with your numbers that's what i would recommend because if you use a system like that you can plug in the numbers here quite accurately at least or, you know for whatever your sample size is accurate uh and and get in good numbers here if you're just using your brain if you're just saying like Oh, I'm a better than average player. I'm going to say I'm 50 I'm 55% because that sounds about right. And that probably means I'm, you know, 585 here. Sure, I mean you can do that, but you're just guessing. And at that point the fidelity, like the fidelity is so blurry when you're just guessing that that the formula doesn't matter that much to me either because you're just guessing and if you have the numbers, you have the numbers and you don't need the formula anyway. So that's why I left the formula off. Um, but, uh, that's, that, that's what that's about. So my strong recommendation is for you to, um, to look up, to use an untapped.gg style service to get accurate numbers for yourself or track like I do, you know, I'm, I'm over here tracking all my results so that I can get very accurate numbers for this or just play around with the numbers and understand that you're a little bit off. And then, and then you can look for, um, for trends, like you, you can move these around and look for where things shift, because that's kind of the key. That's what we're like what we're looking for. Um, so now let me look at uh, the the next set of numbers. These are the controversial ones. A lot of pushback. I got like there are some people who kind of expressed anger 
that I would set these at zero or that when I had them at some, I put them at zero because I'm tired of people expecting defaults from me on these when I keep saying, there are no defaults for these. These are squishy. The thing about uh, the thing about these prizes, if we go back to prizes over here, these gem prizes are absolute. You know what? How much do you value 2,200 gems in gems, everybody? How much do you value 2,200 gems in gems? It had better be 2,200, or I don't understand how your brain works. But if I say, how do you value three boosters in gems, you all could say something wildly different and it would be totally legit. And the reason why is the gem, these gems that we get back, these are usable. This is currency. When we get gems back, I can spend it to enter the next event. That is really valuable. That is important. That is the fundamental economy stuff we're talking about. Boosters, unless you have 4X, are producing collection for you. That's not something you can spend to get back into an event. So if you value this at zero, that's legit. You can, the, the wild thing about boosters, and it's what I put over here in big pink, so let's read that now. Note, how a given player values a given booster on a given day can range from zero to 200 gems, but don't worry if you aren't sure. The important driver of what queue do I play is win rate and not how you value a booster, which again is why I suggest untap GG or something that tells you an accurate win rate. Uh, but let's talk about how it can range from zero to 200. Let's start with zero. Uh, my buddy Adam only uses Arena to draft and never 4Xs his rares or his mythics. So tell me what a booster does for him. I mean, you could, and also he doesn't want to do, uh, leave the draft, go craft up to 4X. He doesn't want to grind gems using my uh, wild card crafting tricks. And so what those elements mean, truly boosters are worth zero gems to him. They have no value to him based on what he wants to use the system for. So it's totally legit for Adam to put in uh, zero for prize booster. I, for myself, have been putting in 20 because um, that's like, I don't generally 4X rares. I mean, I don't generally 4X mythics. If I always 4X mythics, I would put this at like uh, maybe even 25. Um, if you didn't encounter wild cards, and you had 4x of an entire set, 7 eighths of your packs would contain 20 gems, and 1 eighth of your packs would contain 40. That's the whole replacement gem, because in, in, in Arena, if you have 4x of rares and open a rare of that set, you get 20 gems instead. If you have 4x mythics and you open a mythic of that set, you get uh, uh, 40 gems. So the average, if a mythic is one and eight and a rare is seven and eight, the average is gonna be 22.5, except that's a little underselling it because every time you open packs, you're moving your wild card track forward and there's the chance of just opening wild cards in your booster. And if you care, like if cards have value to you, wild cards have a lot of value to you. So the wild card factor would push you up past just those raw gem numbers. But again, if we're, if we're talking about it from a limited perspective, and you were just a, uh, and if you're like a, I'm a, I only care about limited, but I do 4X my set, then you would be calling this 22.5, you know? Uh, and you could do the same math. Like if you think um, on average, I'm gonna get uh, three rares or mythics from a draft, you can just multiply this by three and go uh, 67.5 here. And uh, let's just worry about draft. I'm not gonna worry about sealed anymore. We don't even need to put a number in here. Um, so now if we do that, you can see it start to shift around how uh, how it values, what it's telling you the value of an event is and what it's telling you the cost of an event is. Um, so I added this in to also show, to show how much money we're talking about if you assume that gems cost this much. So uh, let's see, here's what I wanna point out about uh, the the how, uh, this doesn't matter. Let's say, let's take me at, uh, let's say I'm, um, well, let's use my numbers. So I'm, if you look at my match win percentage, my average at, uh, best of one is call it 62. And my average at best of three is like 64, five. Is that about right? Something, something like that. It, these are fine numbers to use for now anyway. Um, so great at this win rate, basically, uh, for me, if I care about cost per game, my cost per game in Premiere is six cents a game, and my cost per 
uh, game in New Traditional is seven cents per game. Now this is important because what, the other kind of pushback I've gotten on this is like, well, you didn't take into account factor X, Ryan. If you go a little bit deeper with your numbers and take into, the take into account the fact that matches get harder as you win and they get easier as you lose, and that affects your win rates over time, but, but that could change it so that if, if, you do, if you correct your numbers, these are gonna switch. This is gonna become seven cents a game and this is gonna become six cents a game. And my question to that, anybody who wants to go deeper into the data to refine this even further, it's like, look, I already have the answer I need here. My answer is, great, good news, Ryan, premier gems events, premier events and new traditional events for you have about the same cost per game. You get to choose, Ryan, hooray. And you know what? There is no magnifying of the numbers. There is no refining of the data. There is no enhance, enhance, enhance. Let's cover more factors. Let's get this more accurate. Like, what are you drilling down for? To know which one really saves you a penny? We're looking for broad strokes here. We're looking for broad pieces of advice here. We're looking for broad understandings of what's going on in the economic system so we can make some sensible choices. As soon as I get to see this, as soon as I see that with my numbers, because this is about, this is, this is me right here. This is how I would put it for myself. Um, I can see that, great. If I care about cost per game, it's about even. If I care about, um, uh, cost per event, I should be playing Premier. So there's basically a tax for me on, um, on playing best of three, right? But I get, but if it comes to play, it's the same. So again, it comes down to what matters to me. If I'm about events and drafting, maybe this means that I'm just gonna do Premier events from now on. Um, maybe it means I'm gonna, I care about this and I'm not gonna matter. But mainly what I'm saying is look at the spread we're talking about. Like we're trying to figure out if we're supposed to be playing quick, premier, or traditional, right? Look at the cost per event for me. The range is 42 cents to 58 cents. Right, so Craig says, costs a lot more time and dollars spent than to worry about a few cents, exactly. And, and that's why time, that's why I don't bother trying to create deeper formulas to refine this data even better. We're trying to get a broad enough perspective so that we can answer our fundamental questions and make our Q choice. Um, Mike says the best of one hand selection algorithm is not being used in Premier Drafts right now. Huh, interesting. Um, I don't know about that, Mike. I'm gonna let that sit. But the, the, the point is, you can see what I'm saying, like refining the data isn't going to give me a new answer to the question because my answer is already, hooray, I get to do what I want, right? And that's the point of this, learning that. You don't need to go deeper into this data to, to learn, um, where the value is for you. And I've added this dollar section to kind of drive that home. I think when people see these abstract gem numbers, they can get into their heads that what we're trying to do here is come up with the perfect answer. We're not trying to come up with the perfect answer. We're trying to get a good overview of what's going on and some perspective about the numbers we're talking about. And frankly, if you wanna copy my spreadsheet and make a hundred different refinements that take into account a hundred different new factors, cause I could rattle off a bunch of factors. I, some are, people are throwing factors at me that I haven't taken into account. They've left a million factors off the table. There are many things we could do to try and refine this data. It just doesn't matter. The point is, uh, so I'm gonna give you a summary and then we're gonna move on. The summary, this is the important number. The match win percentage and the, your match win percentage is the huge biggest driver of these numbers down here. These are the numbers you wanna get right. If you don't know these numbers, then you should be looking more, uh, you should be exploring. Like one of the things you can do, like let's say, um, uh, I said I was gonna summary and now I'm not summary. I'm going to one more thing I wanna show you. Cause like, if you don't know these numbers, how do you use this sheet? Well, you can start playing around. Let's say you're messing around. We're just messing around with best of one. Okay, we're just like, what happens? We can see that uh, for the 50-50 player, Premier is quite a bit more costly than Quick. Okay, 27 cents per game in Quick versus 49 cents a game in Premier for the 50-50 player. So 50-50 player probably shouldn't be doing Premier. And like you can see the cost per event, you know, a buck 53 if you are 50-50 uh, for quick and 278 for premiere, 
Okay, that's a pretty big difference. But so then one of our fundamental questions that we're trying to answer with this spreadsheet is where did the, at what point does that switch? At what point does this switch over? So let's find, let's go see what happens at, again, 0.75. Let's take a big leap up to uh, 75% win rate. Uh, do this. Um, now we see that uh, at 75%, you are literally infinite. You're just straight up making money on Premiere and you're making less money on Quick. So absolutely, uh, clearly at 75%, you should be playing Premiere over Quick. Um, what about 68? Let's, let's just lower it a little bit and see what happens. So at 68, it is kind of free to play Quick, but you're making money at Premiere, so you still want to do Premiere. What about 64? Okay, at 64, it's still costing six cents per game in Quick and zero at Premiere. So, so you're kind of break even at Premiere at 64% win rate, which is kind of, we're, we're a little under that. So what about 0.62? And you can see, well, and you can see from my numbers that we were getting there, like, just look at that f switch and boom, suddenly. So we can see that like at 63, oops, 0.63, oh no, here, I gotta undo my error there. 0.63, it's closing in on it. What about 0.635? Anyway, I'm not gonna refine this anymore. The point is we can see that where Quick and Premiere kind of cross in win rate of what you should play is about 63.5%. And if you happen to be in this win rate neighborhood like we are, your response should not be, well, let's drill down into the data more so that we can get a more accurate number and figure out where we really belong. The response is to say, hooray, we are right on that line and where we're at, we get to pick from two different cues. So uh, that's my mentality about that. That's why I don't bother worrying about the fidelity of exactly this. That's why I put these at zero. Oh, I wanna give you one more example of how hard it is to put these in here. Uh, this is an example I gave in a response to someone on Reddit who was, again, questioning um, questioning how you could value these at zero or at, uh, at, at 20 or whatever. So I want you to imagine a player who's about 40% win rate, but they love magic. They're sticking with it. They want to get better. They're into limited, but they're also into constructed. They like constructed a lot. Their play pattern on arena is to buy the $50 uh, bundle ahead of a new set release. And then they sometimes buy some packs in the store right after launch because they're trying to get to specific decks. This is a player who loves to have the deck they want the first week a set is out. That's why they go ahead and, and they, they buy that pre-order. Uh, but because they're only 40% win rate, they don't, they don't get, they, they need a little more. So they buy the 50 bucks up front and then they spend 200 gems on booster packs at the beginning of a set so that they can get the cards they need. So the day that that player spends 200 gems on a booster pack in the store, they are demonstrating that they value prize boosters at 200, right? I mean, you paid 200 in the store, that's what you value it for, right? That same player, because they buy the bundle, because they buy, buy because they're a spender, consistently by the end of every set, they, ha they get 4X. They get 4X of all the rares and 4X of all the myth mythics every time by the, by the end of it. Yeah, but Aquanau, they want, Aquanau, some players, they come out of the gate and they want that deck, right? So they're gonna do whatever they need to get those cards right now. And if a player buys a, a pack in the store for 200 gems, they are saying they are on the 200 end of the scale. But that same player, by the end of a season, this same player now has 4X of that entire set. Now ask them how much they're gonna pay for that booster. Are they gonna put 200 in for the value of that booster? No way! That booster is literally like 25-ish. Again, it's 22.5 plus whatever you count the wild card value as. We'll call it 22.5 and ignore the wild cards. That same player goes from 200 on day one to 22.5 on day 90. So what do you tell that player to put in here? That's why I don't do defaults. That's why I won't put anything in here because I cannot tell you. If you are my buddy Adam, this belongs at zero. If you are the person I just described and it's day one of the set, this belongs at 200. I am not about to tell you what that should be. It is not a thing that has a default. And the most important thing is it doesn't matter to the end results because that's also the other thing I wanna show you before we go. 
So let's take our 50-50 player again. We see that uh, Quick Gem is the is the cheapest option for them. Of these of these three draft options, 35 cents a game, 59 cents a game, 50 cents a game. They're like I'm in on uh, ge Quick Gem cost per Quick. I'm on Quick because it's the best for me. But you say. You haven't entered how you value those boosters. Let's say you're that new guy. You're the you're the uh, right out of the gate player who who's willing to spend 200 gems on uh, boosters and sees the average va draft value of cards as being 600 because it's like three boosters, right? Let's say that's you. Well, let's check and see. Um, negative 40, which is to say this is better for you than just buying boosters at the store. Ne so paying you 40 cents paying you 36 cents, paying you 27 cents. No matter, going from zero to the extreme of what you might possibly value this at does not change the stack ranking of which event this person should play in. So that's again, um, you can mess with this stuff to see what kind of dollar value you think a given event is actually worth to you. Because it, yeah, if you would pay 200 gems for a booster, uh, the events start to pay you at the beginning of a format. But as soon as you are in the world where you're like, I have a, I have it all now, now it's just this. As soon as you're like this, it, it changes those, it's no longer paying you, but your stack rank doesn't change. And that's what, that's what I wanted to drive home. Yeah, you can put in whatever values for these boosters you want. It's not gonna change the answer to the question of which queue you should play in. So uh, I'm gonna take some AMA now from, uh, from chat before I sign off on this, and hopefully this was useful and not too long-winded. I, I really wanted to explain myself on this stuff so that people could use this properly. Uh, any questions? Or should we just get going on draft? All right, I'm gonna, I don't see any immediate questions from chat, so I'm gonna sign off on this. I'll say, YouTube friends, if you've got questions, if I didn't explain something well, uh, please go ahead and say something in the comments and I'll do what I can to get back to you on that. But for now, that's how to use that spreadsheet. I hope it helps you uh, get a better lens into the Magic the Gathering Arena economy and helps you relax a little bit. How you value those boosters doesn't really matter to your Q choice. And if your Q choice is pretty close, congratulations. Make the determination on what makes you happy about the queue. Don't worry about a nickel, right? Uh, we're, we're here to have fun. We're here to have happiness. So the good news is if you're in a tight range in your queues, you get to pick based on what makes you happy instead of a penny or two, right? Okay. Thanks, YouTube. See ya.